Okay, so last time we start to work on radiation from the localized oscillating sources. These sources are the current densities or charge densities. So what we have done, we said that we have a, some localized charge density or current density is better and oscillating harmonically in time and we are interested in to look at the fields basically electric field and H magnetic field so what tools we have we have vector potential. So knowing the vector potential we can calculate the H field and using the Maxwell's equations Faraday's or Ampere's law, modified Ampere's law, we can estimate the electric field. So we use the uh, Lorentz condition and we know that the solution of the non-homogeneous wave equations using the Green's function and the vector potential is in the following form mu 0 over 4 pi integral of current density over x minus x prime e to the i k x minus x prime d cube x prime so this is coming from the uh, non-homogeneous uh, wave equations under the Lorentz conditions. So we said that let us look at the problem at three zones. What are the three zones? So emitted radiation has some wavelength lambda. We can look at the radiation at far field zone at this zone uh, R is much greater than wavelength and greater than the source. And the other zones, the our point of interest could be closer to the wavelength or less than the wavelength. So for the far field zone, we Look the we drive the vector potential in terms of in the following form. We make a Taylor expansion to the exponential and we find that the vector potential in the following form mu zero over four pi e to the i k r over r summation n 0 to infinity minus i k n over n factorial current density n dot x prime to the n power integrated through the volume. So that was the approximation at the far field zone. Source is small in dimensions relative to the wavelength and our point of interest is much greater than the wavelength. So the spatial case n equal to zero, the lowest order of this series, could be expressed, indeed I proved to you, in terms of in the following form, um, a of x, is minus i mu zero omega over four pi e to the i k r over r times p, p is the electric dipole moment. X prime times the charge density integrated through the volume that is the electric dipole moment. And I said that this 
vector potential is behaving as a spherical wave. So today, this is the point we stopped last time. Today, uh, we will try to calculate the magnetic field, electric field, pointing vector and power, power emitted uh, per unit solid angle if we have a electric dipole radiation. So basically we are discussing the electric dipole radiation. The simplest one could be the following. So suppose that we have plus Q minus Q charge. They are not static. Oscillating in time, their charges are changing in time is a cosine omega t or sine omega t and it could be expressed easily uh, in terms of exponential complex numbers. So let us start to calculate the h. So the calculation of h is easy but the calculation of the electric field is a little bit handy. So this is equal to curl of E over mu zero. And what what is our vector potential? A. So if you plug the A over there, we are going to obtain the following minus I mu zero omega over four pi. Uh, curl of e to the i k r over r times the electric dipole moment. So electric dipole moment actually is a constant vector when you integrate it through the all space of the charge densities. So this is nothing but the curl of a scalar function times the uh, vector and that is equal to minus i mu zero omega over 4 pi gradient of the scalar function gradient of e to the i k r over r cross product electric dipole moment plus e to the i k r over r scalar function curl of p p is a constant therefore this term will be zero so if you calculate the gradient of e to the k r over r so what we are going to obtain so i forget to write the mu zero mu zero so that will be cancelled so the uh, H will be minus I omega over 4 pi. So if so this is a gradient in spherical coordinates but R is it is depending on the r, it's a radial coordinate. So we can define that the gradient with, with respect to the r only del over that r, r hat. And I'll take later r hat as a n hat unit vector. Okay? So because this doesn't have any other. Uh, this doesn't depend on any other coordinates like at theta and phi. So all you have to do take the just partial derivative, uh, take the gradient with respect to r using the partial derivative of r, del over del r. So if you do this, you will obtain the following. So the, the first term, derivative of the exponential is i k over r and e to the i k r derivative of the 1 over r will be minus 1 over r square that will be totally e to the k r over r square r hat is the direction of the gradient and instead of r hat I'll write n hat 
n hat represents the unit vector along the radial direction, cross product electric dipole moment. So, if you arrange the terms, you are going to obtain the following. So, take the IK over R outside the parenthesis. So, you will obtain minus I omega over 4 pi IK times, take the parenthesis of e to the i k r over r and the rest will be 1 minus 1 over i k r and cross p. So you can handle the things very easily. Omega is equal to k times c and k times c, so this is k square, c, i and i is minus, and altogether h field, a clear field will be the c times k square over 4 pi e to the i k r over r, that is the spherical wave term, 1 minus 1 over i k r, and cross P. So basically H field goes with 1 over R times 1 over R square terms. At the far field this 1 over R square term will go to 0 much faster. And it is the form of spherical wave e to the kr over r. That means that as times goes, uh, as the distance goes on, the amplitude of the h decrease as a one over r. So this spherical wave is very important. Uh, we will see when we calculate the pointing vector altogether, they will be independent of r. That that means that we can see that the radiation from very large distances. We can see that the radiation from the cosmic background, from the early universe and so on, because the waves are spherical waves. So I'll point at that point later on. Okay, this is the H field. So this calculation of the H is easy. So the difficult part is the calculation of the electric fields. So I will carry the calculation at some point and I will write the result and I will discuss the result. So E electric field could be written as I Z0 over K curl of H. So you can obtain this using the uh, modified Ampere's law. We have curl of H, which is equal to current density. Our point of interest, there is no current density, so put zero. And you have what? Plus partial derivative of the del electric displacement over del T. Instead of del over del T, you can substitute minus I omega. And then you can solve that the electric field in that form. So let us try to calculate the electric field. I times Z0 is the impedance of the free space. That is mu0 over epsilon0 times 1 over k is here. The first term is the impedance of the free space. And what else I have to calculate the curl of H and H is here. And so let me take the coefficients outside. So the coefficients are what? C K square over 4 pi. This is the coefficient. And curl of this bunch of terms including the spherical waves. Uh, that is 
e to the i k r over r 1 over 1 over i k r n cross p n is our unit vector so let us play quickly with the coefficients k's will be cancelled and c is 1 over square root of mu 0 epsilon 0 mu 0 terms will be cancelled and but we obtain what is left i times k times square root of 1 over epsilon 0 times 1 over epsilon 0 makes 1 over epsilon 0 the unit will be i k over 4 pi epsilon 0. So, we, we pick up the 4 pi epsilon term in standard units. So, the rest is curl of curl of let me take the n cross p ahead n cross p times e to the i k r over r 1 minus 1 over i k r so this calculation will be a little bit long but i have to do at some point because you have to see that, that some steps so again this is the curl of a vector times the scalar and that is equal to i k over 4 pi epsilon 0 gradient of the scalar term this stuff is the scalar gradient of e to the i k r over r minus e to the i k r over i k r square so i distribute the one over r inside uh, cross product and cross p plus the scalar term e to the i k r over r minus as e to the i k r over i k r square curl of n cross p so this is the electric field so this will be the long expression long calculation but we will see a nice result at the end so i want to continue to calculations so did i do correctly gradient of the scalar is here cross product and cross uh, p and i have scalar in here uh, curl of and cross p so i'll start to play with this term this vector so h should we stay here let us start to play with the calculation of the curl of n cross p so curl of a cross p is a identity you can use the indices to derive or you can use the first page of your book so or any mathematical books so the first curl of n cross p is equal to and divergence of p minus p delta n n is a unit vector along the r head plus p dot gradient along n head and n head gradient p there are some terms zero which terms are zero whatever the derivative is the 
electric dipole moment that is zero because the electric dipole moment is a constant vector. So basically this term is zero and this term x to the p that will be the zero. Now we will start to play uh, let me call one prime let me call this as a two prime and let me try to evaluate what is one prime and what is uh, two prime one prime is what p dot p not a p uh, divergence of m so let me keep in that form so let me calculate the divergence n it's better then I can multiply p so divergence of n is divergence of x in three dimension or x magnitude so x over x magnitude this is the n unit vector so this is a vector times the scalar and that is equal to gradient of 1 over x magnitude uh, that is a vector gradient of the vector is vector and we are getting a scalar at the end so therefore take the dot product with x gradient of the scalar dot product with x plus divergence of x with x magnitude. So tell me what is the gradient of 1 over x? Do you remember? Gradient of 1 over x. So from the first part of the course that is nothing but x over x cubed and you have that x and what is the divergence of x you can say this very easily x what is x x x hat plus y y hat plus z z z if you take the derivative with respect to the x you will have three that will be three three over x that will be the three over x and what you are going to obtain this is x squared this is 1 over x x magnitude is at the same time is what r okay x magnitude is r so this is minus 1 over r cube 1 over minus 1 over r sorry this is plus 3 over r and all together that is nothing but 2 over r so this is the contribution of the first term so then this is nothing but 2 over r along electric dipole moment and let us work on so let me erase this I can rewrite it later let me work on the, the second term so it is the second term is a little bit more longer so we have let me say 2 prime uh, p dot gradient along n so let us write this component by component px del over del x n hat py del over del y oh, py del over del y and hat pz del over del z and hat so n is again a unit vector x over x hat so that is equal to that is equal to px del over del x x over x magnitude and similarly py del over del y 
x over x magnitude and the same thing let me do one more pz del over del z z over uh, x over x set x vector is x i y j z k x magnitude is square root of 2 x square plus y square plus z square if you take the derivative what you are going to obtain if you take the derivative of the upper term you will have i times the rest if you take the derivative of the lower term you will have uh, 2x times, min times uh, minus 1 over 2 and the power will be uh, not the power of the whole stuff will be 3 over 2 so let me do one term and con conclude the result quickly that is px times derivative of the x is i divided by x square plus y square plus z square derivative of the second term is minus 1 over 2 times 2 x times the x x i y j z k divided by x square plus y square plus z square 3 over 2 and close the parenthesis so do you have any question here okay I take the derivative with respect to the x then divide this then I take the derivative of this I have 2x 1 over 2 minus because this is in down and times the x x is xi yj and zk if you do this for the other terms you will have the similar terms and then what will be the full result So we are trying to calculate the p dot gradient n p dot gradient along n and what we can find what is this this is px over r you will have here what py what will be this what will be this term on the bracket if you take the derivative with respect to the second one that should be j j over r and this one will be k over r so if you do this this will be j over same thing and that will be k head over same thing so all together pxi pyj pzk is equal to p divided by r so did you see this did you all see yeah this is trivial so if you put instead of x take the derivative with respect to y you will have j take the derivative with respect to the z you will have k head and if you look at the second term here twos will be cancelled this is nothing but x vector or r vector this is nothing but x cube the tricky thing here what is this px times x along r okay the first term px times x along r if you do the same thing here what you are going to obtain py 
times y along r that will be the pz times z along r so divided by all of them divided by r cubed so the second term will give you p dot r or p dot x in three dimension along r over x cube over r cube So if you do the, for example, the third term, you will get uh, what you are going to get, uh, minus 2z over z and r over r cube, for example. And if you do the for that one, you will obtain 2 over 2y uh, r over r cube. So as a summary, we have the this term here. So if you look at this as a whole, uh, we will get the following. What we are trying to calculate, we are trying to calculate curl of n cross p, curl of n cross p, we want to calculate and we reduce this calculation to two terms that is minus p divergence of n plus p dot gradient along n and for the first term I calculated 2 over r for the 1 prime and for the 2 prime I could have calculated that. So if you put the things together you will get the following. So 2 over r uh, 2 over r is the divergence n and that is along minus p so that makes minus 2 p over r instead of this term so basically this is nothing but 2 over r and p is the minus p over r and other term p dot gradient along n is p over r minus p dot r over r over r cubed. So this is nothing but minus p over r. So you, we have terms going on with the 1 over r, 1 over r square and 1 over r cube. So this is the calculation of the curl of n cross p. So I'll show you quickly what is the uh, other term and I come to the point as possible as quick I can do. So basically this curl of n cross p where is this minus p over r and minus p dot n over r over n hat. So let me tell you one thing here. R is nothing but R magnitude n hat. R magnitude n hat. So these R's cancel and this drops to the 1 over R and that is n. But we have the terms is related 1 over R and R square and that makes the terms 1 over R square, 1 over R cube. So, so I will interpret those things when we come to the latest point, not now. So the next thing uh, is the gradient of this term. So let me try to calculate the gradient from here. So the derivative, so I'll just write the derivatives. The first upper term, 
I K I K R over R. The second derivative with respect to the second one will be minus one over R square e to the I K R over R square. That will be the second term minus the above term. This one the exponential brings I K down I K times e to the I K R over I K R square and the below term will make what minus 2 makes plus 2 plus 2 e to the i k r over uh, i k r cube and uh, the rest is cross and uh, cross and cross p so i k and i k cancel and these are the two and that is nothing but 2 minus 2 of the same thing e to the i k r over r square so and if you take the gradient you will get this along r hat okay so if you take that you should obtain a vector and it is an r hat so basically this is n cross uh, n cross p n cross n cross p if you look at the all bunch here, all bunch here, only one term is the spherical wave. This is this, that is alone. E to the i k r over r. This goes 1 over r square, this goes 1 over r cube, this goes as 1 over r square because we have 1 over r, this goes as 1 over r cube. So I will separate the spherical wave term and combine the other terms. So basically, now I am coming to the end quickly. I am keeping the spherical wave term. I have ik and ik here makes minus k square. ik times ik minus minus make k square. In order to get rid of the uh, minus, I will switch the cross product. I will take the n cross pn. So, in the parentheses of 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, in the parentheses of 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, I have k square n cross p n times the spherical wave, k square n cross p cross n e to the i k r over r. This is only the first term. This is I am studying only on the first term. Uh, first term, where is the first term? I k I k minus k square n cross p n cross p. I switched the order, I wrote that. Okay. So this is the spherical wave term for the electric field. And the rest is the exercise for you, but what you are going to need, let me bring this to the down. We have n here and cross p. If you write the openly this, what is this? In the right, write the openly this. This is n dot p along n minus n dot n along p. Okay? I pick the first term and put it there. For the rest, you have what? For the rest, this term, this term, and cross, and cross p. So for the rest term, you do it by yourself as an exercise. Open this as a n cross p along n minus n dot n minus p. Okay, n dot n is one. Oh. If you look at the, this, you have what? You have what? P. You have P. You have what? n dot p n. You have n dot p n. You can combine everything. Okay. So if you do this carefully, you will get the following. You will get the following. So I want to. I don't want to do this on the blackboard because you can do this by a paper, pen and paper, by yourself much more easily than what I am going to do in the blackboard if I try it. So the result will be the following: three n hat n dot p minus p 
1 over r cube minus i k over r square e to the i k r. Yes. So if you take the coefficients of n dot p n, you will get this bunch. If you take the coefficient of p, you will obtain that. So you can verify this by yourself easily. So what does this long formula tell us? So let us rewrite the h h again. So we have E and H for an electric dipole radiation. So H is C k square over 4 pi e to the i k r over r 1 minus 1 over i k r and cross p. So after a long derivation we find something and what are those so what are those things? What you see here, if you call, go to the far distances, only dominated terms are what? 1 over r. 1 over r squared and 1 over r cubed die much more faster. And here, if you go to the far distances, again 1 over r is important. So let us go to the far field and look at the h and e at the far field. So when kr is much greater than 1 or 2 over wavelength over r time r over wavelength is much greater than 1 that is the far field zone. So h goes to h field takes the form of what? c k square over 4 pi e to the i k r over r and cross P. And electric field takes the form of what? So if you take the far field, 1 over R square and 1 over R cube terms are dropped to the 0 and you will obtain the only this term, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 uh, K square and cross P cross N e to the i k r over r. Now, at the far field, this is a structure at the far field, only one over r terms sur is surviving. So, can you make a connection between the e and h? So, if you look at carefully, you have in the h and cross p, in the e, you have one more cross product. So, you can plug these things together. So if you do, you will obtain the following. So let me do for you. This is the important point. So the electric field, uh, take the 1 over epsilon 0 out, multiply by C by divide by C, and you will get C k square over 4 pi n cross p e to the i k r over r cross n. So these are the same. What I do, I take the epsilon 0, multiply by c, divide by c, put the 4 pi inside. And what is this whole bunch? What is this whole bunch? What is C, K square over 4 pi N cross B, I K over R. What is this? H, H. What is, what is the C? That is 1 over uh, square root of mu 0 epsilon 0. One of the terms ter takes into the square root of 2. And you will obtain, this is equal to, that is equal to, square root of mu 0 epsilon 0 h cross n. Is this something we see in the past? Yes, 
Yes, this is the behavior of the plane waves. These are not plane waves. These are spherical waves. Amplitudes of the waves are decreasing as a one over r. But if you go to the far field zone, that tells you that E H and N are mutually orthogonal to each other, and that is the impedance of the free space. Just zero. So for the radiating zone, radiating fields, all the times you can use this uh, H cross N. Okay, if you go to the far field zone from the source, the N, E and H are mutually orthogonal to each other. But in general, if we are somewhere, N cross P is what? N is the electric dipole moment, N is the point of interest. In general, what is N cross P? It is a transverse to the R hat. So if you say this is the N hat, N cross P, this term, is what? Outside the blackboard. So basically, if you look at, at any point, that you will find that the N hat and H are orthogonal to each other. R hat and H. But for electric field, there is not a such condition. So there is an electric field could be along to P. That could be orthogonal and that could be N. So, so if in general is something like this, so electric field it any, it is a parallel and perpendicular components to the N. But if you go to the far field zone, if you go away from the source, electric field also perpendicular to N and H. Okay? In the close to the source, electric field is more um, many components has. But even the far field, uh, in the far field zone, they mutually orthogonal to each other. So from now on, if we, for the far field zone, we will get this. We will say that the N, H and E mutually orthogonal to each other. And the amplitude of the wave is decreasing as 1 over R. If you take the amplitude of the wave, this is decreasing as a 1 over R. If you go far distances, E field decreases as a 1 over R. H field decreases as a, again 1 over R. But if you go to the infinity, you can still get a radiation. That is interesting. So I'll come to that point when we look at that, the pointing vector, not now. Now, before giving a break, uh, let us look at the near zone. Let us go to the source, nearby the source, which term is important when you go to the uh, investigate the fields near to the zone, near to the source, sorry. So, if you go to the close to the source, near zone, kr in that case small. So, 2 pi over lambda over r is small number. And if you look at the terms, what kind of structure you have, which term is dominated? When kr is small, first of all, the exponentials are unity. kr goes to zero. And which term is important? r cube. For that one? r squared. r squared. Is which term is dominated? r cube or over r? In far field zone, e and h both goes as 1 over r. But in the near zone, only 1 over r cube is dominated. So, if you compare the E and H in the near zone, which term is more dominated? 
electric field because it goes as a 1 over r cube. And if you look at the, if you write the electric field in the near zone, you will obtain what? 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, uh, 3 and n hat dot p over p r cubed. Is this field oscillating? Yes, it is oscillating if you multiply with the i omega t. But in, in space, is it oscillating? Is there a, any oscillatory term here? But here you have e to the kr with the distance. There is oscillatory term. But for that, no, because when kr is small, this turns to the zero. Kr goes to zero, e to the exponential goes to the one. So in space, there is no oscillator. That's why they call a near static. And another important, what kind of formula is this? Do you remember what is this? This is, what is this? This is a very fundamental formula for the uh, electric field. If you have an electric dipole, static electric dipole, the field lines exactly is this. If you go to the fourth chapter, Look at the electric field of the electric typo identical in this one. So basically, in near static zone, so this is let us give a name near static zone. Field lines identical with this one, and that is this. So these are the free electric field lines. They are static. So that is the reason they are called near static zone. So H, H is goes as a 1 over R, it's not important. 1 over R square is not important. So H is much in is a magnitude, H is much less than E because H goes as what? In the near zone is a 1 over R square, but this goes as a 1 over R cube. So basically, if you go and look at you, your book in chapter 4, so multiples uh, electrostatic of macroscopic media, dielectric, uh, where is this? Equation 4.13 is the same as this. So basically, it is called near static zone because when you go to the closer the source, the electric field is dominated, even the dipole is oscillating, if you, even if, if you have electric dipole radiation, so you have only electric field lines. But if you go to the far distances, then you have an head, and you have what? Uh, H cross N, so H cross N. H is in transverse and cross H is something like this. And the amplitudes are decreasing as a 1 over R. And the E is outside or inside E. Okay? E and H as a magnitude goes as 1 over R in the far field zone. But when you come to the source closer, E is dominated and the fields are exactly of the static electric dipole. So what is the next? The next thing is important. What is the emitted power per uh, solid angle from the, the dipole radiation? What is the pointing vector? I could say before the break one thing for the pointing vector. Pointing vector goes as what? E cross H. E cross H has 1 over R square. This is the pointing vector. But if you look at the pointing vector goes to zero at infinity. But if you look at that the integrate through the any cross-sectional area, what is the solid angle of this any cross-sectional area in spherical coordinates? It goes with the but r square. So r square times one over r square cancel. Therefore, you can get the radiation at the infinity. The why the waves are spherical? If the waves are not spherical, if it goes one over r square or something we cannot get information from the 
large distances. But now we can get the information. For example, you know that the first light was occurred, what? 13, 14 billion years ago. We can see that radiation because they are 1 over r square, 1 over r. So the waves can be detected at infinite distances. Okay, so th this is a very important consequence. So I'll discuss this uh, in the next next hour. So I will calculate that the power emitted per salt angle, and then I'll start to study that the uh, what magnetic dipole radiation and uh, electric quadrupole radiation. Okay, let us give a break. Then we can continue.